There he is. Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. So there we go. Now, now you can hear me well. Oh, we look like we are a little bit alike each other, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would say a little too much alike. Mm. Indeed. It's like the, the clones reunite. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I like it. <laughs> but, but I never wear white. I, I mean, this is this is rare for me. So it's uh, there must be some meeting of the uh, the east and the west, or Canada and mm. which country yeah. are you in? Your origins, your origins sound sound like uh, like Russian. It is. No. Yeah, your origins are Russian. So I'm Lithuanian. Ah. So. Do you still speak Russian? No. 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 My grandfather was Russian. Mm -hmm. And he, es he escaped from Russia in about 1919. And then they came to England and then they came to Canada. And um... yeah, so your, 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 um, your white bloods. <clears throat> <laughs> so did, was it you in the spiritual mind? Did I? Um... Did you ask the question, what is enlightenment? I did, or I did. probably I did. And then I, yeah. I sort of said, I sort of didn't quite make fun of it, but I thought of, of any times I've been in God consciousness and that's the last thing you think about when you're there. But uh, when, you're, when you're not there, you certainly think about it a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, I ask these types of questions because that's how I get, get engagement with the customers, with potential customers, you see. Uh, you know people show up their pain or people show up what they they're looking for people show what they kind of incline towards you know and some people some people you know um say for three four five years or three years are searching and cannot find and this is painful and i i come in give them clarity <laughs> 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 and voila things are glowing and they're happy happy customers so how 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 many people do you get from Facebook? Is that like your main your main you know, area? I've, I've started a year ago. I've started a year ago properly, and I didn't get much traction. You know, I didn't get much clients. I probably get some four or five people only. But now I'm working intensively to 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 enroll at least two three a, a month. I can see you can tell because like not many people let's say make contact with me and and even the ones that do they don't last long or it depends upon i mean for me something has happened like i don't know about you but there's like these sort of gradated sort of uh, <laughs> ups and downs and i'm in the middle of an up and a very strong up and you're you're recording oh, okay that's okay. yeah and and so i i watch like who comes into my proximity or who are, who are the new people coming in while I'm depending upon what, where I'm at. And if I'm in some, Oh my God, like this is amazing kind of stuff. If someone comes in during that time, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, who's this person? Okay. Well then let's, let's take a close look. <laughs> and, yeah. A lot of people are lost in this kind of a searching. They're lost in this concepts. They're lost in this new age and the real stuff. They're not ready. They're not ready for or opening slowly towards it like being a little bit more curious and some people really want to know exactly what's going on because they're already tired of getting fake stuff being fed to them so how how do you come to be the source of such truth you know 28 years of searching and 28 years of of experience gives gives their own fruits and i was always like that i was always seeing deep I was always seeing deep. I was always seeing the aim, or, or, or not aim, but um, essence of things. I would say, as far as I remember myself, even at school, I was 13, 12, 13, 14. I was seeing the essence of what's going on. People fighting, people having conflict, and I see why they do it. Or as a child walking to school, walking to to kindergarten, I look at person's eyes and I can see how they are when they are alone. 
So for me, it's already a long time. And, and this essence, this kind of essential things are long time. So since 19 years of age, then I found a teacher, spent four years with a teacher, four and a half years with a spiritual teacher every single day, you know, driving his car, making a food and washing the apartment. And then another integral yoga by Sri Aurobindo, then constant, constant practice for many years. And then finally discovering creator's particle within hearing creator talking to me and and then in business with creator not searching anymore <laughs> well well let me ask you something because i think that whenever anyone speaks about either i'm talking with god or i'm talking with creator or i'm talking with any sort of high spiritual name or word people at least you know i know when i've been in whenever i've been in the throes of some higher spiritual dimension like there's there's kind of like there's no i'm the creator or there's no naming there's just this overall sense of present like whatever the experience is for me it's it's just this awe-inspiring unbelievable incredible it's like every particle in the universe is looking at you and you know they're all looking at you and you're wondering how the heck does this kind of happen but then for me i've had very strange experiences in so many different ways over time that it's kind of like you know, I'd love to say I'm, I'm talking to Mother Earth, or I'd love to say I'm talking to Creator, but I don't know, like any, let's say a spiritual, just like we are to an ant, another spiritual being at a higher level is going to have that sort of impact to me in terms of coming across like a God or coming across like a God or the God. How do you distinguish Creator specifically? You see, you cannot talk to Earth, first of all. <clears throat> let's be real. We can only project but earth doesn't talk earth is material okay i'll stop you right there because i've had an experience of speaking with what i would call an entity called mother earth where i don't care what you say if you've never talked <laughs> to that being that means you don't have access no let me explain to you okay let me explain just be open a little bit everything in universe is very precise and very 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 specific so if you are talking to universe universe well universe is something like a concept universe doesn't talk only beings can talk to you only beings can have beings who have certain certain something in in, the, in there or certain consciousness can transmit and receive see universe or planet or something that doesn't have that doesn't talk to you. <clears throat> you have a projection and you, and, and you said yourself, some kind of an entity that tells that it's an earth was talking to you. So you specifically saying that some kind of an entity, but not earth. Well, I, you see, I, when, I you, when you talk to someone, it's, it's like this talking when you, when into your mind, into your calm, completely mind, falls certain formations of energy and opens up into you into understandable language for you you have a color or specific vibration of certain person and because we are all unique there is no similar there is no alike because we are all unique you can only sense the energy of this specific being and in, in universe, in, in spiritual realms, everything absolutely just specific. If you will talk to universe, you will not be able to talk to creator. Like, can, can, I, ask, can I ask you something? Sure, sure. Have you, have you ever been in another dimension? What do you call another dimension? <clears throat> Where there's, there's nothing in that dimension that is in this dimension. Like it's so utterly different that nothing exists within this dimension there. So that's, to me, the distinction. It's some kind of a planet. It's some kind of a different plane. It's, it's the same place. Of... It's the same here, mm -hmm. but another dimension. Because your physical body is here, or you may or may not be in it, but you, there is a presence. You are in it, but you're not, let's say, in it. And now this you're... Can be, that can be a projection. You see, everything that we have inside of us well, you, you may not believe me. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 everything I know. That, 
I know that it's not true. Like my direct experience is not going to be assessed by your belief system because, oh, of you, course, of course. because you haven't, yeah. you haven't experienced it. And I'm not going to all of a sudden discount yeah, yeah, that yeah. experience because yeah, yeah, that it doesn't exist. But be open. Yeah. The only thing is just be open and uh, test it and try it. Because when you, when you resist, you are not allowing, you're not being open because you cannot be resisting and cannot be open. At the same time, you're either resistant or open. Well, I so understand, and I also ask you to be <laughs> open because I'm telling you something. I am, I am, I am completely, yeah. Well, you but just said I did a projection, which it is can an be a projection. It can be a projection. Can be. It can be a projection, yeah, okay. of your of your thought adjuster, of your being who is in there, who is showing you the, the, these projections. Because without the thought thought adjuster, without that being the particle of creator, you cannot see those things. You cannot project yourself anywhere. Because you are in here and now, you, you are in this, in this body. So that means you see the projection. You are not out in some different dimension. Again, I, I wonder about the language and you would you would need to leave the body probably to go to some different dimension and you do that when you when you consciously slumber when you consciously asleep your body is asleep and then you go to different places yeah and of course there is tons of different dimensions there are tons of different things for example there are spirits for whom the matter needs to be explained because they do not uh, decipher matter they just go through it they don't understand what it is they doesn't they don't have a concept of what is matter yeah. So, you know, and we are the beings who starting all this journey just from the very beginning. So, but we are very fortunate because in us, we have a particle of the one who has created all this entire universe of universes. And being, le being led from within by that being. So, you see, the, the thing is that when you, when you talk to God, God is a concept. God is something... Okay, but when you talk to universal father or to, to, to personality who is a divinity, because no, you see, we are persons and we cannot be created by not person. There, there has to be someone higher than person to create a person. And regardless, you know, uh, okay, this personality that we are associating ourselves often with before our awakening or before enlightenment, which is a little bit more kind of animalistic mindset, which is uh, fragmenting, which is afraid, which is being in the future, which is sometimes stuck in the past, sometimes um, having preconceptions, having rejection, having resistance, this kind of a being, yeah, this kind of a mindset. This is, this is also vibration, certain vibration of the mind. While we associate it with this one, then we cannot be in that a little bit different vibration where you can see and know exactly how things are, where there is no resistance, where there is a free will, where there is opening, where you feel the bliss flowing. And then in that sense, in that place, you can talk and communicate to beings because your mind is ready for it. It's no chaos running. You know, I've been, I went through these things, believe me, 15 years I was, I was walking and asking questions and going deep within and feeling like an orphan and feeling lonely like crazy and feeling depressed, repeating om and om every single day and getting depressed because of it, because I didn't know, you know, seeking something, searching something and thinking, what the heck is going on? I'm repeating, you know, sometimes laying down or ready to sleep and suddenly I'm hearing this om, you know, sound independent of me or, or, or say reading the Bhagavad Gita and then understanding that I am this bloody Shiva and talking, reading this Bhagavad Gita aloud or Krishna, who is that, yeah? Like all these kind of different experiences and then, but you still feel like an orphan. But only when I discovered the creator within me, then things changed completely. I stopped searching. And uh, that was, that was like, of course, because I had this experience, then I started 
I just was sitting every evening and talking out, talking in my mind, speaking to creators, speaking things and so on. And then I noticed I'm becoming sincere. Then I noticed that the something flowing in me and filling me this absolute love, you know. And then finally, one evening I sat down and I heard falling down into my mind. Mind is like still like a mirror and into the mind, you know, have a direction in life leave the rest up to me it was like a three days i was walking like in in the seventh heaven and this was and and you know you cannot not understand because the being who talks to you has no beginning has no end <clears throat> it's it's inbuilt in the energy it's not that you know with your mind that he doesn't have a beginning or doesn't have an end but it's the energy of the being who is telling you talking to you or throwing those formations into your mind has no beginning and has no end these are my experiences and since then i i stopped searching i live i live in this i'm, I'm being kind of getting used to be in eternal in eternal energies getting used to be in eternity not in some kind of not in some kind of a searching mode or something, but being in every moment, being okay with every moment. And in the beginning, imagine you, 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 you are just being per, like, you feel from within this leading from within that you are eternal. And at the same time, your mind, you feel the pain in the mind because mind does not, cannot, my mind cannot get used to how, how you're eternal, you know, it's, it's painful inside all these kind of experiences you know happening so but then uh, you you just you become slowly 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 you get used to it and you already now living in eternity you feel that you are creator's creator's son and that's my life experience right now so that's why i'm in business with creator and and spreading this message talking to people so what what are your sort of like long term <laughs> like what do you want to accomplish Sort of with, with your gifts just creating an awareness that every human being is a son or daughter of creator and this creator is real real and discoverable within and waiting for that it's sitting there and waiting for you but it's not going to it's not going to lower its or his or her vibrations it's not going to lower his or her vibrations but it's going to be there and shine like, you know, if you have empathy or you have, if you have compassion, you are not going to jump into the lake to save someone who is, who is dying, but you're going to do everything to help them get out, isn't it? Some creator has certain vibration, has certain laws of creation, and it's up to you to figure out how to reach those vibrations, how to be in those vibes, to align yourself to a creator. So, I mean, you're sort of positioned as a spiritual coach. Is that sort of what I'm hearing? You know, I do, I try to, I try to position myself for the market. I try to position myself for the market, spiritual coach, mentor, and uh, mindset transformation coach. I call myself these names, whatever, whatever, whatever correlates, whatever, whatever brings the bell for people. So whatever how... brings the bell for people. And then... I speak live, I, I create certain content and people, if they, if they relate to it, they get to me, we talk. And I take people for three months or for six months. I have them once, once a week for two hours and we, we speak. I have a certain program to take them through. And then after that, I have a group where I have my, all my clients and I just give them one hour a week, whatever questions they have or correct them a little bit. And direct them that way <clears throat> what about online courses uh where people are just get going through a program of your videos mm -hmm. but you don't have to sort of teach but it's a it's your... tricky i'm going to the i'm going to that point i'm getting to that point but um it's very individual you see even you explaining to people how uh, how to feel good and people don't get it say i was talking to the crowd of 20 people explaining how to always feel good and how to how to understand that you are 
how to understand that you are, you know, you're thinking wrong thoughts or, or bad thoughts or thoughts that takes you into feeling kind of a wrong ways. And only one or two people understand, only one or two people get it. <clears throat> it's quite, quite, and you're explaining it properly, but you see the problem here, the problem with the spiritual coaching is that you have to constantly be aware what kind of brain human being is in. Is, this, is he in the human brain or he is still in his survival mechanisms, fight or flight or survival mechanisms? Because from those mechanisms, he's not open, he cannot hear you. Yeah, he will interpret it completely different. So you have to be really cutting through those filters, set it, set the person up, so they would be okay with the past, okay with the future, open to 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 unknown, open to to these things. You have to really work, and sometimes it takes hours and hours for to to, to do that for people. Are you even though? Huh? Are you familiar with the gene keys? With who? Gene. The gene keys. Um, I, sense, I sense genetics. I sense genetics of people. I can sense. I can. I can feel who is whose genetics are open for for spiritual energies. Who's not? It takes five minutes. Enough for me to talk to person and say, "Okay, wonderful, fantastic. Have a wonderful day. I can't help you." <clears throat> I just sent in the. I sent you a, a link in the message. It, uh, gene keys interesting uses the I Ching it has 64 gene keys and it has the shadow the gift and the Siddhi as the mm -hmm. three elements it's one of the best uh, diagnostics I've seen out there it's like a new knowledge field it comes through it's sort of built upon human design I don't know if you're familiar with human design I heard these concepts didn't didn't yet look into it closely they could be the most I don't know, advanced new spiritual knowledge coming on the planet right now. Um, it's, it's wild. Right now, right now, Elia. Elia, it's a beautiful name, by the way. What's son is no, your name is very beautiful, Elia. <clears throat> oh, Elijah. All right. Well, Elijah is, is in that, but in, in, in Elia, Elia would be in, 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 in the origin would be Elia. Ah. So how, would be how asleep is your country like how like do you have pockets of sort of uh, places where there's a lot of sort of awake people or is it pretty slumbering or like how do you eastern europe is quite awake eastern mm -hmm. europe is quite awake yeah a lot of a lot of people in estonia find quite awake a lot of people in lithuania find very awake mm -hmm. but but you know this animal mind this it's not something that is easy to cut through or get through it's very tricky because you know survival mechanism and fight and flight it's something so well inbuilt that for people is difficult because it's when they start moving out of it it feels like the earth is moving out of the ground they're losing themselves you know they mm. lose an identity which is really happening in fact they lose identity for sure they disconnect things but i'll tell you this that the 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 most uh, currently the the most advanced currently the most advanced and the most simple i would say thing is that you know that creator is available for everyone there inside can be discovered and then all the human designs are complete in it because when you have a source discovered within then you you have everything basically <clears throat> everything is in it already yeah, aim for the top. I mean, everything else can come from that. So uh, I agree. That's that's what it is. So you know, so anything that people speak to me, any people say, people speak about this human design. People speak about different techniques. is wonderful, but everything is in the basics. We all have brain. Our brain functions in certain way. Our mindset, our brain set is very similar because we are all similar. And once you know how these patterns work you can be in any part and explain any part to human being and it seemed like you know business experts would come into the business and they would uh, they would look into the business and they would look into um what you call it um processes of business 
and they know which link is broken and they fix the link and the business function as well. Same here, you know, you come in, I see the person, I talk a little bit and I see what is broken. I start fixing it. When it's fixed, then it, everything flows. It's like a pipeline. You fix the pipeline and then creators start flowing through it. Mm. No, That's my expertise, you see. <laughs> That's so, what I do. So what about um, teams? One, do you work with teams? And two, do you have a team? Like, do you have a group of people that you're working with at your level? Um, do I have people that I work with my level in my level? <clears throat> uh, there are people in Lithuania, few. But we don't communicate that much. But what about like, like media help or like a sort of support team for you to, it's pretty tough to do it all by yourself. I, I know, I know what it's like, but to have, let's say a marketing person or uh, an organ event organizer, um, someone who can sort of take your game to a bigger level. You see, uh, I am still very young in this uh, online space. Okay, well, really very young in the online space, one year. Of course, I learned a lot. I studied a lot and worked a lot in that kind of a marketing space and how to market myself, how to connect to people and so on. Um, I don't have that yet, that, that system in place. I have one client. I have my first client was a marketer. So he is helping me with finding the platforms, finding the ways to connect to people, kind of a more innovative ways, you know. That's, that's what's happening. I have a virtual assistant who helps me as well, a little. Mm. But no, I don't have this kind of support system where, where there would be PR or someone who, I, I, you know, finances are not that. Yeah. How old are you? Oh, I don't know the ways. I'm 40 old? something, 40, I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know already. I am timeless. What are you talking about? I am, my body's, I'm here for some, like, something like 49 years, I think, soon. Okay. It's going to be in 10th of July. So now it's 6th of July. So in four days, it's going to be 49. Okay. <laughs> yeah. just, everyone, you know, everyone that I meet, you know, everyone's at a, a sort of different place in their own, you know, kind of how far they're close to where they want to go and how much tech support they have. Like so much is infotech, right? I mean, we're having this conversation that's amazing to me uh, for free through, you know, talking to someone on the other side of the world. You know, th that's a miracle to me every time. That's fantastic. Happens. That's lovely, of course, and me, and absolutely. And, and to, absolutely. Sort of, to, to sort of like look at the link, let's say to, between Canada and your country and to think like, I don't know anyone in your country. I've never really met anyone in your country and to be speaking Sort of nation to nation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's again, it's this is a <laughs> so we're speaking about you know high spiritual matters, which which is a the, the type of conversation I love. Like it's, it's amazing, yeah, it's amazing. I agree, and and you know I'm sitting in this wonderful countryside, <clears throat> beautiful river. I've just been swimming already third time today, and uh, fantastic forest around, and amazing, amazing place. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm able to, to share this wisdom with, with people, you know, talk to people and go live and, and put content and it's, it's fantastic <laughs> possibilities. Well, I mean, I'd like to give some feedback or kind of like most of my life has been spent with other spiritual visionaries. So my, my, you're my, I don't know what my target group, but at some point I said I was going to help 144 spiritual masters to, to bring their work into the world. And that's one of my seven lifetime goals, which another one is to transform the world's economic system from fear to love. So when I'm interacting with situations and people, there's always my long-term goals are in the background. And then I have the design of what I'm working on. And so I, I you sort of fit within this story I have about how we're going to do it together. Because what I see is whatever... The prophecy of the 144,000 kind of spiritual masters coming together, it just seems so obvious that there's a lot of people on the planet right now that are very smart, want to do good, have some sort of spiritual practice, are tired of the old paradigm and want to create a new world, but they're separated all throughout the world, right? They're all over the place and all of them are sort of struggling in the old paradigm to make money because the old paradigm is such a crock of shit and no one really wants to participate in it. So to me, my own work is how to organize an infrastructure 
to connect us all together such that you make a good living, you design what you want, you're interacting with larger infrastructure and marketing, but you're still autonomous to be able to do what you really want to do. Because like I've, I don't know about you, but I've, I've been in a situation where I've got masses of, of sort of like say prototypes and ideas and things that are good for the world, but I have to be the graphic designer. I have to be the video editor. I have to be the video person. I have to, every step of the way I have to do, which has been good because now I got a whole bunch of stuff. I know how to do a bunch of stuff, but inherently I've wanted to be part of a large organization where I could just make the thing, pass it off. The team takes it and the percentages are split and I don't have to do the things I don't want to do. I just want to create. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you just might just want to teach, but if you had someone who, who filled a room with 200 people every week and all of a sudden you know, you're at a higher income level so you can hire people to do whatever you need to get done, now you're running a different type of business and you're really, you really might have an experience where you can get 200 people to wake up you know, in that experience because you got the field effect, you got the sound, you got everything and you do it. And that's just going from one-on-one, -on -one, like this one-on-one -on -one space where you're mastering that to the community space. Right, because you're, you're teaching people about the personal space. You're teaching- I teach people, yeah. In, mm -hmm. in making it into the sacred space, right? You, you're bridging this gap here. People don't have the connection to the sacred space. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, yeah. So this map is like the beginning of what I've been working on as a way to just help people distinguish the boundaries <laughs> of what you're doing and how you're doing it. And this map is the starting point because most people lack the boundaries to understand when I'm in the group space, I'm a very different person than I'm in a one-on-one -on -one space. Absolutely. That's what I wanted to say. So the maps help the teachers to give the visual people a representation of what they're learning. Because a lot of times you're, 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 you're speaking, it's very auditory. But for kinesthetic and, and visual learners, it's a lot more difficult to, to, to process the abstract teachings that come through sometimes. You see what happens with me? What happens with me? I flow. I don't give intellectual information. I flow, okay? That means when I talk to a certain person, so my energy suggests to that person's energies, and he receives the, the, the language that is suitable to that person. He receives uh, explanation that is suitable to that person. And sometimes some things flow that I listen myself. Oh, wow, interesting. You know, never thought about this thought. So I flow. I, 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 I don't always, I, I never even prepare. I have, a little, I have a little snippet there in my notes, what I'm going to talk about, what is the intention. And then I just speak, I just flow all the time. But what happens when I speak to many people, then I have to decipher that energy and speak to that kind of a crowd because I sense what's going on, who are these people and what are they ready to receive? What is their level, where they, where they can go? If they can go to this point, I will not speak those things to them, you see. But those who are ready for those things, they will say, oh, yo, 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 yo. maybe it's not. Maybe it's not my, my person or something, even though they may feel. But those people who, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. You, you, talk, you talk certain things, but still individual thing in spirituality is very important because, because of different levels. And you, you see the person, you see the opening, you see his um, experience, you see his uh, behavior, you see his level of opening, you see his spiritual, what he's capable of, capabilities, opening, genetics and everything. You see all those things and you have a specific way of dealing with that. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's good to uh, have the message meet the people where they're at. Uh, I would love to work, of course, I would love to work with many people and so on, but I, I believe that will come. Maybe it's through our through our walking together or something i don't know well, i'm open yeah i mean it's it's just again the maps kind of like when you're speaking to 200 people it's very different from speaking to 10 which is very different from speaking to one right and so let's say at community space what i found is that you can program these fields let's say i put justice at community space and i put humor at group space and i put love at one-on-one -on -one space let's just say 
that creates a conduit for when you're flowing. Because I get that when you become the conduit, right? Like the information comes through, you can't say what it is, it's amazing, comes through. But what I've noticed with this is that you can program your field such that you're, again, if you're using humility or you're using gratitude or you're using any of the higher virtues, that these are like conduits to the mind of God or creator, if you want to call it. Like they're yeah. attributes of creator, but they're also attributes of ourselves or they're actually living energies that we get access to, right? When we sort of put attention upon them and realize the value, like when you realize the value of mercy, when you realize the value of gratitude, when you realize the value of humility, it's because you've gone through certain experiences that it deepens <clears throat> your connection of understanding and realization of those values. And to me, any yeah. spiritual practice, the deeper spiritual worldviews, what are they doing? They're teaching gratitude, they're teaching humility, they're teaching kindness, they're teaching compassion, they're teaching, you know, this. these are the essences of what people are here to learn. I think there are deeper things. There are deep, deeper things than passion, gratitude, compassion and things. There are, deep, there are deeper things, you know, and these deeper things are not I think, but I know there are, uh, there are certain laws, okay? And um, <clears throat> I'm with you. Okay, you're back. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you. Um, creation is very strict. Okay. Creation is very strict. I mean, not creation very strict, but the way it functions, it's very strict. And if you if you vibrating in certain way, you will get certain information. You you are a certain person. If you are vibrating a little bit in different way, you are you are receiving something else. So universe does not does not uh, um, not universe, but you the way the way everything functions and the way the energies flows, it doesn't bother. It doesn't bother whether you are com like not compassionate, but it doesn't bother how you how you are if your vibration is in certain level you will be receiving and you will be living the certain reality it's up to you to figure out how to get a little bit higher and there are certain laws and if you are making your decisions or if you are making your choices according to those laws then you are either in this vibration or in this vibration you know you cannot be in two together so you are you are unconditional all the time you either here or there, and it's always about the being. And um, what, for example, you know, some people are fed up of this plane. Some people are not happy with this 3D reality, so-called, and so on. I am blissful here. I love it here. Okay. The reason is because this is certain reality type as well. But when you bring into that certain in, into this reality, when you bring creators' energies, when you're being here and now. And when you kind of, uh, when you look into it as a field of experience, when you flow that what you have, when you're not living outside from the outside, but you're living from inside and you're not reactive, but rather loving, when you're not um, resisting what is, but rather embrace it and love it. It's completely different experience. You, you feel blissful all the time. You're happy, you're content, you're loving because creator is love and only gives love and only fills you with love. And then you become like creator, you see, because you, with whom you are constantly communicating, you becoming like one, you see. But is, tell is, me who are five of your friends, I will tell you who you are. So then when, you know, creator yielding love is a source of love. So when you communicate to creator, when you live with creator every day, you've been filled with love, with compassion, with everything that creator is. And then you just distribute it wherever you are. And for you, when you are eternal, already now you live in eternity. And it doesn't matter. It's heaven, it's earth, it's hell, whoever, whatever. You are unconditionally who you are. And you just resonate and you just give what is inside of you. I love this place. I love this earth. Yeah, I can go into the business. I can do many different things with love, with happiness. It's, it's experience. That's the commodity of this universe. Well, I mean, when you say there are <clears throat> things uh, as laws, I, I guess I, 
I question that in the sense of like what you're saying to me is is when you realize the value of acceptance. Acceptance yeah. acceptance is realizing where you are at every moment no, and being no, okay no, with it. So those people who are no, fed up with you please let me finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um that you know there are formulations of these values that create a process that can be conscious or can be unconscious we're just using words right to sort of try to share our knowledge in some sort of way and what, what i have is tools that can be passed on to people that aren't just relying upon me as a methodology right if i'm the guru and i and you have to be in the room with me to get my teachings that's very different than handing off a tool to someone who can then go use it on their own. And to me, I think it's more important to empower people to be their full potential self. And that happens sometimes in a different teaching style than people know. And so what, it, what, I, what I've discovered is these maps activate things in the genetics of the people that is beyond my teaching, is beyond me having to tell them anything. They just do the map and then magic happens. And so then if they do that map and they can pass that on, and it's not again relied upon me for being the guru, then something is transmitting through the species as a result of the tool, which is different from direct transmission from another individual. So when I talk about these values, I have a card set of values, 100, 100 values that actually program conversation types. Like we're in a conversation right now, we might be going back and forth between an instruction, right? Say so you're trying to teach me something or you wanna share some knowledge. Maybe we're in a knowledge sharing conversation. That's a specific type of conversation that's different from a healing conversation. If all of a sudden I started breaking down and I'm trying to tell you something and you're, and you're hearing my deepest pain, that's a shift, right? To a different type of conversation. Have you ever heard of nonviolent communication? I did not hear about a specific label like nonviolent communication, but I can can kind of imagine what it can be. But it's probably in in your understanding, it has a certain set of set of uh, ex description of what it is. Well, there there was a I think Morgan Rosenthal he, he created a did a book and had a whole program called nonviolent communication. So it, it, it has a, it's a knowledge field within the Western mind that actually is probably the top communication system that sort of ever got taught around the world. Like a lot of people know it within the Western psychology. And essentially it's a healing conversation programmed with compassion, focused on need. So whatever the person's coming at you, doesn't matter how angry, whatever they're, let's say they're in a, in a negative emotional state. All you, you're doing is you're holding the space for them in a healing conversation. You're asking them, what do you need? And your intention behind it is compassion. And that formula revolutionized communication in, in, in Western psychology from what I can understand. Now, what I have is a set of cards 72 conversation types, 100 values, and over 200 concepts that can formulate spells or methodologies of creating conscious communication with people that take into account lessons or the values that they're learning and gives them a completely different way to communicate with people. It, nothing exists like it on the planet right now. What you're talking about would be interesting to see, of course, would be interesting to, to see, but uh, what you're talking about is <clears throat> um, is just being for that person, really, not, not really trying to, when, you know, some people communicate and they try to, they try to get the response, they try to share, they, it's, it's like um, conversation happens, yeah, but what you are talking about is 
when you are completely on that person and when you completely even see the where the energy is coming from and when you can see where are these thoughts are coming from when he speaks well yes and no i mean the like this here right this is an idea of, of one conversation type without sharing knowledge of the results of any behavior considered as influencing or modifying further performance once again feedback throwing feedback um, sharing knowledge of the results of any behavior Consider as influencing or modifying further performance. Okay. Mm -hmm. I get so you. probably a lot what you do and a lot what any coach does. And I Coaching, know, yes. Is, is you're hearing what they're saying and you're giving feedback. You can see, let's say where the problem is, or the deviation is, they're trying to achieve this, but they're acting or, or communicating like this. So you give them feedback saying that is not going to get you where you want to go. Right. I've been a basketball coach. So basketball coach, they watch how they play. And at some point you're sort of giving, you know, you're doing this right, you're doing this right, you're not doing this right, okay, go practice this, right? It's a method of, of communication. That is very different from a briefing. Get people involved and ready for an event or an activity. Right, pretty simple. Like every one of the convo types is actually simple. But what happened was over time, I kept hearing the same patterns in people. Some people are always telling stories. Some people are always in credibility. Some people are always teaching. Like I bet you your default is you go into an instructional convo a lot, right? Um, no. I uh, actually, I, I, learned to, I learned to be with people. I learned to be with people only when they want, only when they are ready, I open up. Only when I see that there is a readiness, serious readiness, then I open up and I speak. Otherwise, I don't. I'm being with them nicely, just looking around into the whatever's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying being in myself. I'm enjoying being in life. I'm fascinated, fascinated about human beings, about how their mind works. Every single intention, they masculinity they femininity they childishness they childhoodness i love seeing all these things and that gives me that opens up something in me this kind of a divinity you know when when i when i see simplicity in everything when i see divinity flowing in everything that's what that what makes me happy that's what makes me blissful but if then is something serious has to happen then i just twist and then i flow so I get it. <laughs> I get it that you're not going to open up into an instruction until the person is showing signs they actually want it or are ready for whatever it is, right? And that's yeah. me having presence and awareness around what communication is necessary in the moment, right? Which shows a high degree of, of communication awareness because you're reading the people, you're reading the impact, you're reading the context, you're seeing what's appropriate. And then in the moment you flow. So, I mean, you don't necessarily need, let's say, these convo types because you may go, I don't even need them because I, I'm using them all the time because you're using them at an unconsciously competent level. Yeah. But the thing is, when you're dealing with people who don't know how to communicate, don't know how to think, don't know how to formulate conversations, that, again, giving them tools that can help them to become better communicators that's very different from just listening to someone who's a good communicator, because then you're always relying on the coach to get the info about how to make your adjustments in life. Mm. I mean, that's, that's not necessarily you, you have to, but I'm just saying that coaching people about communication or about who they are without tools that they then can use themselves, to me is there's a lot of, I mean, the thing I is from a, from a spiritual teaching point of view that no matter what you're going to have your own philosophy you're going to have your own worldview you're going to have your own techniques you're going to have your own methodologies whatever it is right but i'm from a point of view of, i build tools for coaches and teachers that are either teaching spiritually or not most people like to me you're in a tough business to be a spiritual guru today 
holy cow. I mean, you're, that to me is a tough business because if, if you language it, let's say you're a business coach, if you language it, let's say you were, uh, as you say, a life coach. Spiritual it's, transformation it's coach. From, mm -hmm. from saying you're a spiritual transformation. That's, that's a, a whole bottle of wax, right? Then you got to deal with the family. You got to deal with the, the culture you're in. You got to deal with all the people who go, what do you know about God? Why do you know about God? Why do you think you're so smart? Like the resistance is huge, right? When you say, I'm a spiritual coach. Um, there is some resistance indeed, but uh, those people either call me a big egoist or they call me or they, they are, you know, depending on where they're coming from. If they're coming from their brain, which is survival mechanisms or from conditioned brain, how things should be, they call me big, massive ego. I said, okay, wonderful, fantastic. But in fact, um, those people who really already sick of traveling themselves and not finding what they want, they are curious. They slowly start transitioning into the human brain and they become curious they want to know more and they're ready and my methodology and the teaching style that i've actually taken is actually giving them tools to get in deeper contact with themselves of who they are and uh, giving them everything into their hands all the principles and everything absolutely so they could make a smarter decisions they could have a tools for being happy like being happy being connected to themselves being completely unconditional means living from within not being dependent on the outside rather sharing and loving to the outside but being completely unconditional sincere and honest with themselves and then i teach everything about the family i teach yeah as you say teach everything about the family how it has to be the family model comparing to universal models of family yeah, all these beautiful things. And yeah, so basically I'm giving them tools into their hands to bring them into here and now, solve the trauma from the past so they wouldn't be in the past, so they would be okay with the future and they would be completely content in here and now. That's, that's where I'm taking them. And, they, and I, I keep them independent. They don't depend on me. I'm a channel. Not the channel, not, not just like channel, I'm creator son with my individuality, with certain way of presenting all these things through my experience and through what creator projects for me for that particular person. But I am taking myself out of equation completely. I'm not some kind of a, I'm, I'm not putting myself as a guru or someone else. I, I always teach people, you and creator is your business. It's your business. I'm here to direct you closer towards yourself to direct you closer to, I'm giving you tools into your hands to know how to deal with the human mind, with the human brain and what's going on in the universe. There you go. This is your keys. You learn, you go. They're not dependent on me at all. And you know, time comes, I kick them out. I had a person that I was uh, uh, I had for two years. Okay, she was constantly asking questions and how to do this, how to do that. Explain that to me. I say, yeah, fantastic. Explaining, 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 and then time comes, you shut up. Now it's you lived in glass house. You have all the knowledge. You have all the experience. Now go and implement, and you just shut up. You don't give any more anything. Anything. And that's it. Finish. So that's, that's the methods you see, and these methods are living. These methods are, uh, these methods are um, setting me free because as soon as I would start being a guru, I would fall out of the spiritual places completely. And I know that it's painful, I don't want that. And I'm not going to get that because I don't take myself serious. To that, I, I'm serious, I know who I am, I know who I am. I don't have an opinion about me. I know who I am. I know my state, my status, and I know what I'm capable of, and I know all these things. But all these things are for the service for others, not to show who I am. Therefore, I'm very simple, very easygoing, enjoying my life immensely, helping as much as I can, not forgetting myself either, having this balance, 
and doing the creator's work. As always, as I say, I'm in business with creator. Mm. <clears throat> Good business partner. Good business partner, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, you know, that's easy. Yeah. Something wrong, go to the boss, complain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, you know, he or she or creator, I call creator because it's not he nor she. Uh, they just cannot be themselves here, you see. They walk through the sons and daughters of theirs. Mm. So the better you open, the better you understand how they work, the better you understand the rules and, and, and regulations of how creation works. Mm. The better you can deliver to people. And in the beginning, when I was some 24, I understood I have to absorb everything. I have to learn everything for the sake of being able to communicate to wider variety of people uh, and be as best as possible, uh, have as best as possible tools to effectively communicate things to people of how things are. So what, what do you think about time cycles? Well, I believe you, you mean time cycles of what? Of how, how everything operates? Yes, like as opposed to linear time, like the, the relationship between cyclical time and linear time as a sort of a reference point for the mind. Well, we are living in this time and space reality anyway. But who we are, we do not belong to time. So if time is very relevant, then you, you, can, uh, you can manipulate time a little bit if you know how to. You can get out of time. If you are more into the spiritual realms, you are a little bit easier. Time doesn't press you so much. The, the, the lower you are in your vibrations, the more pressure you have out of time. What do you think of this map behind me? <clears throat> Let me zoom it a little bit. The time translator. No, I can't, I cannot zoom it actually. I cannot zoom. Um, let me check. Are there any words there? Yeah, there are some kind of words. Yeah. Moon. Okay, moon, and I see, I see this, um, I see the zodiac signs. I see certain homes. I see east, west, south, these things, yeah. The time translator and yeah, some symbols are not, I'm not familiar with. You mean the, these ones? Yeah. The my so you've never studied the Mayan calendar you've ever oh Mayan calendar I heard about Mayan calendar but uh, it looks like actually Mayan calendar did not end up the way it had to in <laughs> 2012 <laughs> so so suddenly everything shut down after 2012 when they say you know 2012 end of cycle and so on nothing happened uh, look what I say what I feel and what I know about the time what I know from my teacher actually that um, time is irrelevant and even the missions that are happening in this world of the beings that are coming here to give certain you know uplift to humanity it all depends on situation of the cis of the planet it does not depend on time so if the situation is uh, okay if the situation is <clears throat> what's the word you know like for the plant if you put the plant into the certain medium, if the medium of the planet is all right and, and there is a kind of a visionary vision that potential of human being is ready to implement next step, then someone comes in here and, and, and do these things, whatever is needed. So what, what so do you think map behind you? <clears throat> well, I can see Zodiac, I can see I can see moon cycles, self, -ex okay, I see moon cycles, that's 28 days. Mayan calendar I'm not sure about, I'm not familiar with, to be honest, to, to, the, to the point where probably you are. And then orange one, I don't know what it is. And then northeast, southwest, I'm familiar with, and in the center there is a source, what it is. Okay, so imagine that's your connection to source, to creator. Okay. In timelessness. Mm -hmm. Then you have the present moment mm -hmm. where you have the four directions. Then you have minutes 
Mm -hmm. Then you have an hour. Mm -hmm. Then there's a switch point. These are actually people. <coughs> there's 20 people, each one represented by one of these symbols. But mm -hmm. that's the seasons. And then you have here 24 hours in a day. 20 seasons. 28. Okay, 28. Okay. 28 uh, days in a moon, 13 moons in a year. And then here's your outer birth chart, your ast astrological chart, or the chart of the heavens where the cycles of the planets are. So you've got, you go from your lifetime to a year, to a lunar cycle, to a day. Switch point is the seasons, then hour, minute, present moment, and timelessness. How do you utilize it? It's the basis of this whole uh, operating system that I've designed called the inflow matrix, which mm -hmm. basically you can custom design for any job, any business and any community and integrate them all together. Mm -hmm. So it's as space is to the body, time is to the mind. So this is the base of the operating system where you bring together cycles of time and then levels of consciousness. This, this would go like in a scale, like seven chakras, if you want, or do you know power versus force by, uh, I think, David Hawkins? It has a scale of enlightenment from zero to a thousand. I can, I can have a, I can feel what is power. I can feel what, what is force. Yeah, I can feel those concepts, but I, I don't have, I don't have an outer explanation of these things but I can sense how power and force is different because um, every single word has its own charge. Every single word has its own experience, its own unique uniqueness. So, so I'm, I'm sending you the book title, <coughs> um, brilliant book, one of the best books I, I've read. And it has a scale from zero to a thousand where like 700 is enlightenment, 200 is fear. And then he gives a kind of number to these different virtues and parts of us. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's brilliant. It's, a, it's quite well known, again, in the Western mind. Um, but definitely a book I would just take a look at. If you're in terms of enlightenment, it's, it's sort of like the only scale of consciousness mm -hmm. that I've seen that really has a, a numerical equivalent for enlightenment versus fear and all the other sort of states. And again, it's, it's a lot of these books, right, are just going to give you information that is going along with what you already know. To me, if you're an awakened being and you're connecting to greater, I mean, you're fine. I mean, you don't need anything new. Um, but what it does is it can give, again, like the, the difference between Lithuania and Canada or the difference between like our own particular streams of knowledge is, you know, we have a lot to learn from one another. There's a lot that I don't know that you know, and there's a lot that I know that, that you don't know in a sense, right? And so my own, this is the background for, to me, actually designing a new economic system. In my opinion, we cannot fix the old one. It's so, it's so rigged, it's so corrupt, it's it's, 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 it's its own nightmare if you really want to participate in it. At, at the deeper levels. To me, we need to build a new system like on blockchain, a new system that involves our own currency. Like we actually, and it's there, we can do that. Like the internet is here, there's enough people on the planet. You know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a whole new, you know, we're going through such a technological transformation that the ability to do things that were impossible, just like us speaking right now, are, are now possible. We're in a totally new world, like where you can, you can teach 200,000 people in India you know, maybe in two years, you know, just based upon te technology and, and the right marketing campaign. So the ability to get spiritual knowledge into it <clears throat> has never been higher, but there's never been so many worldviews, so many spiritual teachers, you know, like, they, like, have you written a book yet? I started with any time I just go into into kind of into the middle of that book it outlives itself because I have new upgraded stuff going on within me. Well, like, I mean, it sounds as if you get your, your direct downloads on video. Um, I don't know about you, but it's, to me, it's like write down 20 really good topics, right. And put them in a jar and then just every day, you know, pull out one or two, look at the topic and then just do your video download 
you know, that's all you need, right? When you got direct uh, connection, um, yeah. it just it's the, the key is coming up with, you know, like one minute. I don't know if you could know about TikTok, but uh, I know, yeah. It's like to me, it's it's mastering the the twenty second video, the one minute video, the two minute video, the five minute video, the ten minute video, the twenty minute video. Like each one of those has a function. Like some things take twenty minutes to really to share what it is. Some things are just quick and sweet and will work really well in TikTok. But yeah. in YouTube, that's <clears throat> all your bigger transmissions. <clears throat> pop that on your website and. You know, it's just to me the the teachers of today have to master the technology of today. You see, uh, again, probably I'll come back to this point that <clears throat> creator doesn't change rules. Rules remain the same. You know, we can invent TikTok, we can invent YouTube, we can invent anything that kind of helps us to. To, to, to jump around or, or flip around, okay? But the rules that are set for the world does not change and will never change. The, 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 the laws that govern entire universe, the reason, action, consequence law is not going to change for TikTok, not going to change for YouTube or for other human being or for individual or for something. They have to change. They have to adopt themselves. They have to go deeper and understand all these kind of a things because what is eternal is going to stay eternal. The rules are going to stay eternal. And in those, in those rules, in those laws, in those concepts, you can have only depth. But in those rules, we have to navigate because creation has certain order because without this order, it would be actually the, the chaos. So it has certain order it has certain ways how mind functions. It has certain ways how mind can receive, transmit information. And these things are not going to change for human being because you know we are certain type of human being. We have two hemispheres of brain. We have certain structure and built in us. We have certain survival mechanism. We have fight and flight mechanism. All these mechanisms are going to be there. And it's up to us to figure out how to get into those higher levels therefore therefore i'm kind of sticking to the point you know that even when you speak about economics economics you can create many different matrix and so on but you have to override that part of the mind who has created the system that we are living in and this is completely based on fear on greed looking at the markets financial markets yeah fear and greed that's that's two factors that run financial markets and if you talk if you look at that about the political things so those people who are supposed to serve the communities and humanity servant became a master so in order to change something you have to change here for the people so they would start being with creator and creating something that is created with creator but not out of the intellectual mind, not out of the greed, not out of the matrix in which they live, which is not real, which is shading them and hiding them away from, from who creator is, you see. And there are some beings who intentionally done something to, to take people away from it because all the school systems, kindergarten systems, and the way even parents conditioned they take the person away into some place where they become bored. And if they are bored, that means that automatically means that these people are completely in the matrix. So I'm kind of more visionary of, of this per permanent or universal way of communicating universal way of being because we even us each and everyone is unique and individual but we still live in certain common ground that we have to respect and it's not going to change for us you see see the map behind me yeah let me see creator loyalty to creator loyalty to yourself to those loyal to you to those you serve to your philosophy, mm -hmm. community you live in, 
and loyalty to some things. I don't see the rest. <clears throat> All sentient beings and then loyalty to Mother Earth. Huh? But this, this to me is, is like the map actually has creator on it. Yeah. Like there, are, there are not a lot of maps that even honor or acknowledge the creator, right? Um, uh -huh. But to me, this, this, and at timelessness, again, like any type of access is at a different higher vibration. Um, and this is the connection between just one value loyalty through each of the time cycles. And then what do you be loyal to? It's just a, a unique way of putting a sort of belief system together or to put like bound, like one thing between people is they give loyal to people who don't give loyalty to them. And those are the people who are always getting into these bad relationships where they're not getting what they want is because they, they don't know that boundary. Like if someone is not being loyal to you, like keep them farther away. Don't bring people close to you that don't treat you right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, like, we use, do you know uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs? Yeah. Right? Like, it's a very well known map, right? It's, it's a well known structure that we use yeah. to differentiate people and where they're at. Right? So, what I've got is an actual mapping system that can connect all the different models together. Mm -hmm. Like, what I showed you just before was cycles of time with levels of consciousness. I've never seen that before. Any map mm -hmm. anywhere does not put cycles of time and levels of consciousness together. Mm -hmm. So it's giving the mind, you know, a structure to go beyond mind. It's, it's giving the mind to me the, the structure to connect to soul. I mean, to me, we're either in our soul or we're in our personality. We're either trapped in our patterns or we're in our pure presence. And the mind is always, you know, to me, the mind's the problem for most people. It's not organized. It's not coherent. It's not, they haven't taken control of their mind. Their mind controls them. And they have no, they're always seeking understanding, try to figure things out in a complex world because the maps that we have that have been given to us by this old paradigm do not actually map reality. They map the scamming of reality. Mm. So to give the mind maps that actually <clears throat> that brings you spiritual coherence and that's something like I, I i take a look at those gene keys those gene keys are a great map they're a great map of consciousness and if you read read the book it's it's i would just suggest because it, it's just it's another language platform it's another methodology but i've never seen anything identify the shadow as concisely as the gene keys and it shows the relationship of the shadow to the gift. So it's, it's not like you've got this shadow, you're screwed forever. No, there's a process to transmute the shadow and bring in the gift and then the higher cities, which to me are like the superpowers, which again, are sort of like all is inconsequential if you have God consciousness or a creator knocking at your door, who gives a damn about anything? <laughs> you're just in bliss land. <laughs> mm, no. You know, when you get to when you get to when you get to know Creator, you are not really staying in the bliss land, but you are taking the certain responsibility, deeper responsibility for what is going on around you, and serving. It's not about bliss. Of course, you get blissful. Of course, you get happy. Of course, all of these things are being being there for you. But as long as you serve, as long as you as long as you do, as long as you live, as long as you living and flowing, as soon as you stop doing those things and focus on yourself, it all disappears. It's not, it's not a constant that now you are, oh, now I have a vine and a woman, you know, and creators. And no, 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 no. It's higher. You take higher responsibility. You take higher responsibility. You take more of this uh, something to to actually serve your surroundings to be around some things there some things there in the map actually okay loyal to creator loyal to self hmm. loyal to creator is cool loyal to self i would change to love your love to yourself and knowing yourself being loyal to yourself you know it can be tricky people don't wouldn't know what is self which self loyalty to those that loyal to you Mm, again, <clears throat> who are they? Are they are they operating from the sleeping consciousness, or they're real to you? Are you one with them? 
and loyalty to your loyalty to those you serve and you don't care really who you serve you just give that word and whoever takes it it takes it loyalty to your philosophy mm, you don't have one you act to the principles you act to the moment you act to the specific situation loyalty to the community you live in mm, community is entire universe See, you grow out of those things, you grow out of community, you grow out of country, you grow out of family, you grow out of them things. You become, you become brother with everyone or, you know, son of creator, brother and sister with everyone around in spirit, not in mind, not in you are my, you are my friend or you are not my friend, but in spirit where you where you decipher, where you see what's happening in the moment and you are able to benefit all of them. You are able to being there for them, able to like, you know, some people cannot stand me or cannot stand me for a long time because being with me suddenly starts triggering all the patterns that they have and starts opening everything. Person who's living with me have to be honest, sincere and open. If they are not, all that shit starts flowing, floating around, and they either start blow, bl blaming me for it, or they start running away. Two things. Shadow patterns. Whatever they are, you know what? Just people, this person has to be, same, same with me, same with everyone. You have to be sincere. If you're not sincere, you cannot, you cannot be with creator, because creator is just sincerity, complete sincerity. When you have nothing to hide, when you have nothing to, to, to hide from anyone, when you are completely open and, and transparent, then you are there where you are. <clears throat> Let me ask you something. Um, do you have a, a philosophy? <laughs> do I have a philosophy? Well, I have certain principles, but um, I listen from the leading from within. I listen to the leading isn't from within. Philosophy? Isn't that part of your philosophy? No, in certain situations, in certain situations, it can be, you act sometimes completely, completely different. You unpredictable. I understand. I mean, every context is going to dictate it. Yeah. In action. I'm just, I'm just, to me, there what are, a philosophy... I would call it principles, rather. I would call certain principles. Okay. Not to, to, to me, a, a, a philosophy would be the set of principles you live by, like the set of beliefs. Like philosophy to me is your overall sort of... Someone who has a philosophy has taken time to make a conscious effort around what they believe, what they value, what principles they live by, what code of honor they have. So, Alaya, one, one, they one, have. What's that? One, one correction, one little correction beliefs is out of place because when you sense the energy when you clearly sense the energy when you clairvoyant you don't have beliefs you see exactly what is you skip the shit i'm sorry for the word you skip any beliefs i don't believe in creator i know creator i don't believe jesus i know jesus i know his energies i know his power i know his how how he how he senses what what's he, what what's his energy i know him personally okay i don't believe in anything there is no beliefs because beliefs can be limiting so these things coming out of the at the end there is no no such thing for me only only energy sensing in the moment what is the what is the what is going on with me and what is going on with the world in front of me Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, I agree. I mean, it depends. A lot of people have a lot of unconscious beliefs, right? That sort of are the main assumptions of their life. So, um, to be when you are getting connected, your subconscious mind is being very organized and cleansed, being organized and cleansed. Especially when you talk to Creator, when you have sincerity, in sincerity, everything is getting. You know, I used to believe past lives. I used to believe reincarnations and all these things. All gone. Nothing is there. I can see human being empty. Nothing. No, no any of these reincarnations. No, no any of these whatever. It doesn't exist for me anymore. And it doesn't matter. If, it's, if it was, 
it, it makes no difference. In the now, who is the person here and now in front of me? What is his concepts? What is his opening? All that matters. I don't, I don't take any more some past lives, reincarnation. No. People say, oh, but I see this, I see that. Yeah, a lot of subconscious mind projection is there. Tons of it. I've seen so many beautiful things. All of it gone. So, I mean, a lot of people have uh, a lot of different experiences. And uh, I know, I know. Formulates who we are and what we see. And I know, I know. And I respect it. I respect it. I don't argue about it. I don't push my own beliefs. Because <laughs> you don't have any. Because I don't have any. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't say, I don't push any or I don't push, hmm, not the right word. I do not project. You know, for me, it's very important whether a person is empty or full. <clears throat> if person is empty and ready to take in, there you go, voila. If person is full, there is no space to put anything else in the world. There is nothing to talk about. For sure. And it, it, it's uh, very interesting when you get people who both know and what kind of com communication happens and what kind of, like to me, I'm very interested in sharing knowledge. And so to me, it's, it's, it's uh, you can have an interview or let's say I interview you and I do this quite a bit where I, I, talk, I just ask questions and the person answers. And, and a lot of people, they don't get the real listening that they either need or love or require. And so if you have someone questioning and, and listening, then people pour stuff out. Um, that's different from having a knowledge sharing conversation where both people are sort of sharing bits and pieces of their knowledge. And then kind of like, you know, you, you, you share and then you stop and you go, okay, what are you saying? You go back and forth, right? It's a two-way conversation. So a, a two-way knowledge sharing is very different from a one-way instructional or a storytelling, which is usually one way. Right? You see, there is another way. There is another way, okay? I kind of labeled this because, uh, because the way I the way I teach, the way I, I, I give this all what I have, not I have, but the way it flows. Um, I was speaking to one marketer and the marketer said, you will well, try, to, try to describe how it is. And I described it as ancient communication technique. In old times, uh, two spiritual teachers would meet and they would tell the story of their life to one another. So it was not discussion, but one was talking, the other was completely absorbing and completely living all that, what, was, what he was hearing, completely absorbing. And anything that was falling into his heart, into the, into the mechanisms, internal mechanisms, were either sprouting and given aha moments and given experiences or not. Then the other one was doing the same thing and sharing his own life experience, complete life experience. And the other was just completely absorbing. And that's how they would part having lived each other's lives. Okay. That's what I do. I don't, um, I, I respect and I can listen here and sit down and listen to everything that person has to say. Absolutely wonderful, fantastic. His view, how he came up to, to see those things, what was his experience preceding all that, how he actually, how he came up to this point where he is, okay? Completely listening, not having anything in my mind, like, oh, but you, that, blah, 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 or that, that, that. No, empty mind completely, just taking in, just taking in, just taking in, and then just giving out. But there has to be a certain level there has to be no resistance, has to be no opinion left, has to be no, yeah, resistance and opinion, those two things, where a person is completely empty and has no fear inside that his beliefs or his knowledge suddenly will not be acknowledged. 
okay? Because that's already need of um, approval from the outside. These things gone, they don't exist anymore. I don't need any approval of, of, of something. All I do, I share. I saw, I, I, I put the seed all over the place. Whatever grows out of the seed, whoever will take it, it's like, you know, Jim Ron was saying, saying the story from, from Bible that, you know, the guy is going and, and just sowing the seeds and, and some will be perplexed, some will be taken away, some will be, birds will eat, someone will come and believe, listen to you and go, or he's talking about the sermon and specifically. No, but this is, this is about the Bible, from the Bible actually verses. So I'm at this level where, okay, person has opinion, wonderful. Fantastic, I'll hear it. Maybe someone needs it, but I don't have opinion. Well, I get with in terms of... You see, when you behind opinion... Just, are you yeah. passing the ball or you want to keep going? I'm going to, I'm going to say that behind opinion, when you pass behind an opinion, when you get rid of it, you get clarity you get energy reading. Once you start reading the energy, energy never lies. Energy tells exactly what is. No opinion left. <clears throat> I'm passing the ball. <clears throat> so to me, when you're, let's say you set up a situation and you're, someone is coming to, they meet you and they know you're, let's say a spiritual teacher or you're a teacher and they, they want to get your teachings and they, you either clarify in the beginning this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell you my story and the other person, and then you tell me your story. Let's just say you do that, right? That's you're taking the conscious time to express how the communication is going to take place or how you like it. Now it may happen anyway, let's say with two people come together and they meet in Japan in the 15th century. And when you get two samurais, let's say meeting or two teachers, they drink tea, they, they express it. There's a ritual in the culture where you know that's the way to do it. With what I'm presenting here in terms of the codification of the communication is that, you know, you may by yourself set up the situation so that you can do that. Or for you, it's a rare experience for you to find someone to do that with. Or you could go to a, an online communication place where people know you go here this is what happens because it's been set up that way because we understand that that's the best way to let's say share knowledge or to, to transmit what we want to transmit but to me in terms of let's say the amount of com communication that you have the different contexts that you're in the different people you're coming across we don't have that we don't have those shared rituals or protocols around how to have a how to have a conversation or what kind of conversation to take place right People are very unconscious. It takes a lot of time to get to know somebody and everyone has their own way. You, if, you, if you meet someone else who thinks they're a teacher, you can be in a debate, you can be in a argument very quickly, right? Because people, let's say you're teaching something. I go, well, I, I got a lot to teach too. And you know, I want to talk 50% of the time. And why do you get to be the teacher kind of thing, right? I mean, I feel what, what, what I have is actually new for the whole species. I haven't seen it anywhere else. I haven't seen anyone have any, anything close to what I have. And yet I find very rare to find people who actually are listening to what I'm saying. They, they don't get, let's say, the significance of what I'm presenting. And I know it because they're, they're in their world and they actually don't want anything new to come in. It's all about the value how much value it presents to the person, you see. It's all about value. <clears throat> so if for me, that what you are saying presents a certain value, then, well, say, other person would hear, yeah? He would listen, oh, wow, interesting. That's enriching, that's important. Let me adopt it, and so on, you know? That's, that's how I see it. So when you have a value and this value creates certain experiences and changes and transformation in another person, then you get attention. See, therefore, uh, not everyone is my customer. 
not everyone is yours. There's a certain audience who will listen to. For sure. Yeah. But, like I'm looking, you know, I think in a few years, there's going to be millions of my card sets in the world that it's actually going to transform the world, the species ability to communicate once it's in software. And I do have a couple of software programs I'm working on right now. And I'm looking for people who, you know, have interests. We're at a high level. Test. What's that? Test it, test it, test it. Um, <clears throat> you know, to, to, to way to test it is just to, to get a couple of investors on board, for example, and say, look, the investor, would you invest um, 20,000 into my project? <clears throat> there are, for example, I met uh, on LinkedIn, I met a person, he's Russian, uh, <clears throat> and he he's investing into startups. And we communicated for a while, and um, he said, look, I would maybe hire you for my team to make my, my team better as a, as a coach, but as a startup, you, you do not qualify for what I do. And he said, I meet tons of people, massive amounts of people to whom I speak. And they pitch me, they tell me that, yeah, this is going to work and so on and so on. And he says, I see, it's not. I'm not going to invest into it because it's not going, it's, it, I don't see any, any perspective, any value. And I tell them, look, it just, you know, maybe you think that it's going to work, but maybe, the, you know, because I know how it, all it functions, maybe it's not. So I would suggest you to test it that way. Find someone on LinkedIn, some investor, and say, look, there is my product. Would you invest? And this will tell you whether, it is, whether, whether this has value. Or you have to find certain people. You have to really define who is actually your target audience. Who would actually need it? Who would be, maybe some speaker, for example, would like to, speaker community would like to have these cards and, and they would they would they would find some value on certain angles that would provide value for them. Maybe, you know, you, you have to think really, because it's all about business in this world. Even even my spiritual things, for example, I have to put it in certain way. I'm I'm not talking to people like that. I have to put it in a certain way to give them to give them benefits of what they, what is going to be working with me. Say, I say, okay, I'll help to manage stress. Be okay with the past means to removing depression, removing anxiety. I'll, I'll increase the happiness level for you. I will create situation where you may be more happy and attract more wealth in your life or good relationship. That's the language people understand these days, language of benefits. I do not tell them, oh, I'm a spiritual coach. Well, who cares who is who are you? You know, what can you, what value you can pro, you can provide? What will I have? What is in it for me? That's how people think, and that's the market decides very quickly. What what how it's going to be? You see, market's very very clever. He doesn't care sometimes whether you have a good product or not. If you don't know how to market yourself, if you don't know how to put yourself and position yourself in a certain way, if you are not responsible enough to put your offer in front of the right audience, it's your business. I have a gold. I have fantastic offers to people. But if, if, if I'm not able to put it in the right way, no one is going to come and take it. Simple. Open the shop in the wrong place and no one will take. Open Bentley in some kind of a shitty place and where, where broke people live. No one is going to buy it. I think I got that. Very simple. I'm just Test saying it. That... I'm testing it all the time. Very good. I have Very one. good. That's Very good. I mean, I'm, I'm being very honest. Something that to me is like so obvious. It's like, if, you know, if I took the time to design a holistic business thinking system, I, I think I thought a few of these things out, you know? I agree. I so agree. Credit me with a little bit here. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <clears throat> anyway, I, I think I'm going to bring the conversation to an end. Yeah. Um, I think maybe to some coaches, yes. Uh, to my to 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 me, I would like to see it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Does this does that what you do 
help help in any way or, or, or you know or, or or can replace that what I speak and that what I give to people can replace well, in so maybe I don't know I can I, you know it has to be tested tried and, and my read of what I'm getting from you is your you're fine as you are you don't want to add anything else to what you have and that's it you know I don't see uh, I, I'm not sensing further business relationship maybe that's true at least not on this level because I'm being but, honest but I'm being I, sincere what, up front you know I'm being I'm being upfront honest with you yeah I know. What, I mean, I'm looking for national distributors. I'm looking for people that actually see what it is, see the value and want to jump in, like to implement in national educational systems, to, to bring into school systems, to bring into like it's, I've got a global plan for what these tools are and there's nothing, there's, there's nothing like it. And I've tested to the point where they work, they, they transform people's thinking, they transform people's communication. I've got no doubts about that. This is I'm in the middle of like an enlightenment period of my own work. If someone makes contact with me, I'll make the effort to find out who they are and what they are. But then, I mean, this is like almost an hour and a half now. And yeah. I, and it's, it's, um, that's it. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll load the video up. It'll be a great video for you, I think, to, sh to share people in terms of your own philosophy to see who you are. And, um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck too. No, I don't wish you the best of luck. I wish you to be just doing the work, you know, as we all do. I wish you to do the work and to be real. To be to be real. Luck comes when you are when you know yourself. Luck comes when you when you affirm it when it comes. <laughs> you know, I'm that person. <laughs> Like, like to me, there's like I've, I've come across, in my opinion, quite a few people like you who you're you're very much in your own space as an individual. But you're not used to connecting with people at your level around working in large organizations or, or larger issues. And that to me is is the future. We need to start to learn how to work together in bigger ways and to build larger infrastructures. And that's what I'm doing. And. I'm not as interested in your own personal teachings in a sense that I believe they're right. They're true for you. They're true for what you're going to do. I, I see the expertise you're, you're, you're coming from. I respect your spiritual viewpoint, but we are not going to do what has to happen by being individuals all across the planet, unconnected in our own little worlds. We have to learn how to bridge use our gifts in bigger teams and projects in order to take care of the larger issues our whole species is facing. And it's, to me, it's not just like, everyone is doing their part and everyone has a certain scope and that's it. But I'm looking to try to bring this larger architecture together and looking for people who have the same interest in doing so. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that said, uh, I'm gonna go. Elia, uh, Elia, I like this. I like the sound of Elia, Elia. And I find that whenever I just have to talk to some person once, and then now I know who they are. Uh, so for any further interactions, at least we we know who each other is to some extent. It's not just some Facebook friend. And I appreciate you uh, reading it's Absolutely out. fantastic. Yeah, absolutely and good to meet you too. The time to to talk today. Have a wonderful time, and whatever I, I will watch the video you sent. You sent something to me did you you sent something to me i'll watch it i look at it because soon i will start working with um, with the businesses as well i'm in a team so maybe this somehow will will i never say no i don't say no but it, it can be implemented maybe for people for business people because that's what, who i am going to work with soon okay We'll so be, let's stay in touch never never you know keep keep things open keep your cards floating in the air don't close them no i i'm usually three years ahead 
when I when I'm in the moment, like I'm a wizard who's three years ahead coming back. So whatever I'm putting forward in the present moment, three years from now will make sense. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Very good talking to you. And let's stay in touch. Okay. Bye, Balthazar. Take care.